just be a bad card. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, when you're filling out the table, mm -hmm. and you see the, uh, I know how to get the Y values, but how did you get the X values? Oh, I just randomly picked those. Oh. Yep, I picked negative two just to cancel out that negative one half. If you can pick any values at all, as long as it's two of them. As long as it's what? As long as it's two of them. As long as you get two points, you're good. All right. I'll continue that on the next page. Leave that up for a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and graph them. Remember, we're graphing y. Well, we might as well put the original since greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 1. And y is greater than negative 1 half x uh -oh, minus 2. So if we go back, let's say we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative one, negative two, negative three, and negative four. So remember for y equals 3x plus 1, we had 0, 1, which is right there, and we had negative 1, 4, which is right there. Okay, so if we go ahead and graph those two. It goes through about right there, and that's a solid line. Alright, and for negative one half x minus two, we have zero negative two, which is right there, and we have negative two negative one. So negative two negative one is about right there. <coughs> so that one lines up to about here. And that one's dotted, so I actually remembered before I started graphing. Okay, so we have our dotted line. Okay, so once we graph those two, we now have four possible sections. We have this section, this section, this section, and this section. We have to pick a test point out of each one of them. So for this one, we'll pick, we'll say test point one, we'll make it one, one. Since one, one is right there and it's in that first section. Okay. You could have picked any test point you want. Now test point two is anywhere in this section where they cross. Luckily zero, zero is in there. So test point two will make that zero, zero. Okay, now test point three is any place in there. So we can pick negative two, negative two, since it's right there. And again, you can pick any place you want. Uh oh, negative two, negative two.
And test point four has to be in this section here. So I'll pick negative four, well, four, negative four. actually not it's just the way mine is kind of off a little bit it should be up a little bit higher because i thought our other number was negative two negative one like one of them was zero negative two and the other one. which other oh yeah zero negative two. Oh, that's why it was off that explains it so zero negative two nope that was right x is zero y is negative two okay Oh, no, because it's 0, negative 2, and negative 2, negative 1. That actually should have been up a little bit. So negative 2, negative 2 is, like, just below it. Okay. Yep, does that make sense? Maybe it will. A little bit. <laughs> yep, so, yep, you're right. We can't pick one exactly on the line. Okay. But with 2, negative 2, we just have to pick one that's somewhere in that section, okay. as long as it's not on the line. I know I probably could have picked one a little further down. But if you wanted to, you could have picked... No, no, that's not. <laughs> negative two, <laughs> negative three, so... But any number, any point in that section would work. So if you were uncomfortable with that one, you could have picked another one. All right, so now... Test point one. We have one, one. Oh, I'm trying to hurry up and not hold you over too long. So if we have y is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1, that gives us 1 is greater than negative 3 times 1 plus 1. So 1 is greater than negative 2 plus 1. So you have uh -oh, negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. So 1 is greater than negative 2, which is true. Okay, remember, to be a solution, it has to be true for both. So you have 1 and 1 here. So you have 1 is greater than negative 1 half times 1 minus 2. So 1 is greater than negative 1 half minus 2. Negative 1 half minus 2 is negative 5 over 2. So 1 is greater than negative 5 over 2, which is true. Okay, so as long as it's true for both, the section with that point, you're going to shade that in. Okay, so you just shade that section in. Now we try the point for 0, 0. Uh oh, put that underneath it. Point two, zero, zero. Okay, so we have zero is greater than or equal to negative three times zero plus one, which gives you zero is greater than zero plus one, which is false. And the minute you get a false, you can just ignore. You don't have to do both. Not a solution. So if we test in test point three, which is negative two, negative two, you have negative two is greater than or equal to negative three times negative two plus one. So negative two is greater than or equal to six plus one, or negative two is greater than or equal to seven, which is false. Okay, so the minute you get a false, it's not a solution. Okay. And if you try test four, which is four, negative four. So if y is equal to negative four, that's negative four is greater than or equal to negative three times four plus one. So negative four is greater than or equal to negative 12 plus one, which is negative 11. So that's true. Now we do the next one. 
negative 4 is greater than negative 1 half times 4 minus 2. Oh, bring that up a little bit. So that means negative 4 is greater than negative 2 plus 2, or negative 2 minus 2. Or negative 4 is greater than negative 4, which in this case is false, because it's equal to negative 4, just not greater than. So we know it's not a solution. We'll bring that up a little bit. Okay, so for this one, the only one that should be shaded in is that one, the section with 1, 1. All right, so any questions on that one? Yes? Would you have to ever shade in more than one area? Sometimes. It depends on which ones you're given and what exactly they ask for. So, yes. could uh, each of the test points be described as like each of the quadrants? Yep, well, it's not really the quadrant, because the quadrants are all either this x, y, that x, y. For this one, it's pretty much everything where they cross. So since they cross is right here, it's just that entire section, oh. that one. So it's the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. You always use both points Yep, you have to make sure it's true for both. Because just like with the system of equations, it only it's only a solution if it works for both of them. So you're going to be probably doing it multiple times, uh, quadrants each time? Yep, at least a couple of times. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So this